Hey there, this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. I am your host, Nina Perez, and we are here to discuss life topics to challenge and transform your thinking. Let's do this. So I have someone here who has been starting to transform my thinking, and his name is Justin Bream, and he is the founder and CEO of a global PR firm, Brepic Communications, LLC, and the author of the number one international best-selling book, Epic Business, which mine is on its way, so I can't wait to get it. He is the connector of geniuses throughout the planet and is an active member of Entrepreneurs Organization's Strategic Coach and Secret Knock. So, Justin, I want to thank you because I know you're a busy dude. So thank you for taking that time out to be with me a few minutes today. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. And uh, very excited to talk. Yeah. Uh, did I say that right? Is it Brepic? Right? Yeah, it's interesting <laughs> because uh, um, people never say it right, but you did. So thank oh, you. Oh, good. <laughs> Justin, the way I like to start is for my audience to know a little bit more about you. So if you can just give us a little bit about who Justin is, by the way, my number one favorite name, that's my son's name. So. Oh, nice. So you're yeah. the second person today that I've talked to who has a son named Justin. And uh, everyone my whole life has called me Jason. I don't know why. Um, my, <laughs> uh, my father uh, was a great man. He named me Justin because, um, or he wanted to name me Justin because he wanted me to be the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. I would have been the worst attorney slash judge ever. Um, so <laughs> Justin is really good for journalism too, though, because you know, you finish just in time. So uh, That's Justin's great. Time. That's great. I love that name. That, that's always been my favorite name. I don't know why growing up, I just loved it. So as soon as I had my youngest boy, I was like, I know his name. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about you, Justin. Yeah. So uh, my father was 61 when I was born. So he'd be 105 if he was alive now. So uh, I'm 43. So wow. I'm like an 80. I'm wild. Everything in my life is wild. It actually happened. So wow doesn't mean anything unless it actually happened. So it's wild it actually happened. So um, I'm an 80-year-old soul, so I should be around 80. So 80-year-old soul and 43-year-old's body, and I have the childish mindset mentality of maybe a four-year-old, maybe five. Oh. And so my sons are eight and six, uh, and, and my wife is a pediatrician. She's the nicest person ever. She says she has three sons or two sons and me, so I'm basically a child. <laughs> It's awesome. Well, if you have that that big of a range too, that means you can relate to a lot of people, right? So that's great, right? Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. I've been uh, listening to you on a lot of podcasts. Um, I don't think you have your own yet, correct? Do you have your own? Yeah, I don't. Be, uh, okay. I probably will. The reason I don't is because I was a journalist for 20 years. I've interviewed tens of thousands you know, of people. And so most of my days talking to the top entrepreneurs in the world. And so basically I'm doing, <laughs> I'm literally yeah. doing this all day right. and I don't currently, I didn't want it to be a conflict of interest where I had to interview my that clients on my own podcast. So that's why I don't have one yet, but likely we'll have one eventually. Yeah. Well, you're, um, you're a great guest on a lot of these podcasts, you know, Justin, um, I come from a different, you know, a view, a worldview. So I'm trying to change that, right? So I've struggled a lot in my life, all that kind of nonsense, and I'm trying to change my mindset to be better. And mm -hmm. so you caught my attention. Um, so I've been you know, listening to you and a lot of several podcasts, watching you on YouTube, you know, because I'm trying to change my mind in the way I think. And I think mm -hmm. the best way to do that is to put yourself in the room with the smartest people. Right. Um, so that, you know, so you can grow and stretch. And I, mm -hmm. I love um, not just that oh, the way your mind works, because you you have a really unique way of thinking. And I love that. I also like that you have a lot of values. Uh, and I wanted to touch on that a little bit. I know that you are really big on balancing family as well with mm -hmm. business. Right. And it sounds to me like family first. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, right. So uh I'm a hundred percent simplifier. I just hear blah, 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 and simplify mm -hmm. it into patterns. That's how my brain works. And so I have two 10 X's in my life. It has nothing to do with revenue, office space, employee count, all that stuff's meaningless to me. Mm -hmm. The only two 10 X's I have is because I'm a hundred percent simplifier. I just see things. So uh, one is 10 Xing experience in life with my family. When you have a good family life, you have a good life. And then 10 Xing my network on a global level. When you do that, you create endless opportunities for your network and yourself. 
And so the byproduct of that is I have an insanely profitable company that only works with the top people in the world. Because if I meet someone and I real and I'll know right away because I talk to the top entrepreneurs in the world, if someone if someone's going to annoy me or take time away from my family, I'll never talk to that person again. So most people right. don't have the courage or confidence to do that, and I just I just do. Like right. and that that directness just weeds out nonsense and attracts greatness. And my mindset, good. I just have an so incredible good. mindset that creates the right network and leads to the right opportunities. That's the right mindset leads to the right network and that creates the right opportunities. So there's no That's sales so or funnels or anything. I just attract the top people in the world. They make opportunities for them, period. Period. Like simple. That's it. <laughs> you did say, you just simplified stuff. that. <laughs> well, I mean, and I'm, you know, it, I'm really excited about this conversation, but all this other stuff is landing the plane. I have the right mindset that attracts the right network and creates the right opportunities. And then I invest heavily to be in several of the top entrepreneurial groups in the world. And those are all five figure investments because when you make good investments like that and you're in the right, right. room with the right people, then it weeds out all this other stuff. It weeds out right. all the wannabes or the hangers on. It just weeds that out. And the people at the highest level, they just make the investment. They don't make excuses. They just so make the true. investment. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so good. Uh, see, this is why I wanted you here. That's it. Okay. Right. <laughs> so how are you? Uh, how are the boys? I, I mean, I'm sure that you're, you're, you're like setting them up for this amazing mindset, right? Because, you know, they're not going to get that in school. They're not going to get that, you know, probably from the majority of their peers, unless they have parents like you. So, you know, how are you, how are you setting them up? What, what are you doing to, to like make their brains um, go in that direction where they get creative and mm -hmm. all that great stuff? Yeah, so my son's right and six. My eight-year-old started his first business when he was seven, and then my six-year-old <laughs> wants to be a Navy SEAL. Okay, so just a you know a lot of people blah blah blah. Okay. There's no meat behind it. Okay, so I don't say anything unless there's meat behind it. And so when my eight-year-old was seven, he was walking to school with me. He goes, Dad, I'm so bored with school. And I go, well, of course you're bored. You're being taught by people with zero entrepreneurial <laughs> skills. So I'm like, learn to read and write and stuff, and then I'll introduce you to people that can, you know, teach you other things. And um, so when I'm in these amazing groups, many times my kids will sit on my lap and watch them with me. And these are the top entrepreneurs wow. on the planet. Mo while that actually happened, that's my whole, yeah. that's my, well, I was meaningless unless you do something about it. So I do so it. Good. That's Right. Okay. So, so, uh, and then my sons have taken the Colby test, the Colby K O L B E. It's the top entrepreneurial test. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Right. So it's the Bible of strategic coach, which is the top entrepreneurial group in the world. And I've been very blessed to, to be in that. So my son's Colby scores, the eight year old is a, um, three, two, nine, six. So he's a nine quick start two follow through. So in many places that's diagnosed as ADD, but <laughs> whatever that is, um, most entrepreneurs at the highest level have a Colby score similar to that. And then my four, mm -hmm. my four, my six year old is a, uh, four, two, nine, four. So again, very high quick start in nine and then two follow through. And so they're both, one has already started his first business. I'm guessing the six year old eventually will. So if they want to go down that path, they can follow in my footsteps. And if they don't, then that's fine too. But at least they know that that option is available. I grew up with, i didn't even know what an entrepreneur was until I started my right. company four years ago. So, and I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you about that if that's something that you grew up with, right? Because no. that's not like a normal childhood, right? <laughs> to grow up, Very you know, taking a Colby score, right? So, you know, what was that like for you growing up? I mean, did you, I mean, you know, somebody, something created Justin, right? Your experiences, <laughs> yeah. your experiences and things that you do created you. So, mm -hmm. what, what was that childhood like? And, you know, how did you make that switch over to know about entrepreneurship and all that? Yeah. So those are two very good questions and uh, I'm a simplifier, but you can't simplify that answer because you can't understand the answer unless I extrapolate on that. So <clears throat> again, my father was 61 when I was born, he'd be 105 yeah. now if he was alive. So, uh, he was a soldier in world war II, an attorney in the Nuremberg trials. He became the president of an insurance company. He came from, he and his three brothers came from nothing, came from nothing. And you know, Wow. So he was shot down nine times in combat, two near fatal car accidents, survived them both. So and so, um, my father uh, wrote a diary of his experiences in the Battle of the Hurricane Forest toward the end of World War II. That was a very bloody battle, and yeah. uh, he died when I was thirteen. I found the diary after he died, and uh, that's my most cherished possession. And um, I write exactly like he does. Boom, 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 boom. His diary is one of the greatest things ever written. Eventually, I'll get it published, but it's yeah. just amazing. I'm a very good writer. He's he, he's world class, and um, so that's that's my dad's side. That's 
dad, you know, that's half of my brain. And then um, my father in his late fifties was driving on a highway and a drunk driver went across the median, hit him head on. The drunk driver was killed mm. immediately. And uh, my dad survived, uh, broke every bone in his body, but he survived because you don't survive. And so my mom was his nurse, literally nursed him back to life, saved his life. And uh, again, most of my days talking to the top entrepreneurs in the world, and I've never met anyone, anyone ever with more hustle than my mom ever. Not never. Wow. So you combine, it's incredible, survive and thrive. Is, I mean, what my mom has overcome in life is absolutely unbelievable. Um, but believe, it happened, but it's unbelievable. And, right. Um, so you combine that endless hustle with genius, battlefield hero, writing brain, uh, came from nothing, and then that's, here I am. And um, so I see those portions of, my brain and my children, and then my wife is the most empathetic, again, she's a pediatrician, so empathy, rules, mm -hmm. order, kindness, love, like all that, whatever that is, and then my sons are a mixture of that, and uh, again, I, you know, I never heard the word entrepreneur growing up, I got a full academic scholarship to the University of Illinois, I got a 32 on my ACT, so I have some type of a brain in the traditional <laughs> educational world, but uh, never heard the word entrepreneur, and so I don't want my sons to I want my sons to not have to figure that out in their 40s, starting a company. Right. If they, right. So. right. Um, so the bravery part, right? I mean, it sounds like your youngest one kind of got that too, right? He wants to be a Navy oh, SEAL. Both of my children, both of my children <laughs> are so, oh my God, they are fearless. And it's so, so, it's so um, exciting. If my, if my dad, oh my God, he would have been so proud of my children. Oh God. Because, um, you know, obviously I miss my father very much for me personally, but oh my God, my children and my father would have been, um, like my dad was a child. He was like a child. Like, like, uh, it's interesting because we, my kids and I just watched Beverly Hills Cop 2 last night. And that is a very inappropriate movie for most children, but my kids, whatever they don't, you know. And so those are the movies I watched growing up as a child. I it wasn't cartoons. Yeah, me too. And right. And so like, it's really interesting uh, and my wife has no idea what I'm doing because she's like, you know, she grew up sheltered and very, like super kind helicopter parents. I mean, that's fine too, but it's like the total opposite of that. And, um, it would have just, it would have been so interesting to see my dad with my children because it, it would have been fearless, like hardcore fighting playing, um, which is what we do now, but it would have been exponentially crazier than that. You know, what's interesting is uh, you said your dad died when you were 13. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Isn't that something that you still got that same tenacity in you, right? And that well, you see, in it, and you see it in your children. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And they never even met them, but you see it in them. Right. And it's, so that's yeah. what's interesting about the diary is I write exactly like my father and I found yeah. out after he died. So it's an incredible connection. And there's the, you know, the Jimmy V speech, uh, the Jimmy Valvano speech. It's arguably the greatest speech of, of my lifetime. Um, and he talks about, you know, know where you come from, know where you are, and then know where you're going, but know where you come from. I know where I come from. Right. And I know where I am and I know where I'm going, but I wouldn't know where I am now or where I'm going if I didn't know where I come from. And I know where I come from at the very highest level. And then when I interview people, um, again, I've interviewed you know, over 10,000 people. And I never come prepared with any questions ever, except for I ask what their parents did or what their parents do, because then, then they think about where they came from. Right. And then that's important to where you're going, right? That, that right. does that tell you a lot about that person? Yeah. So it tells me a lot about the person and then the person thinks about themselves. And so then they start mm. thinking about things that that actually matter because nobody cares about what you do. They care about who you are, but if they I've care heard about you say that. who you are, they will care about what you do. So I like people to talk about who they are and where they come from. Cause then they think about why they're doing something. They're doing something usually because of who they are and where they came from. Usually. So at 13, that must've been a very, you know, big loss for you. Right. I mean, that, that had to be some real struggle there growing up, you know, knowing yes. that you do not have your dad. So right. it, do, do you feel like that formed you as well? Like, um, you know, the, that impact? Because I think when you have a big loss like that, right? Even you're like, I don't know if you have siblings, but I'm assuming that everybody probably had it impacted differently, right? Yeah, right. So I can answer that very directly. Um, 
So my father died when I was 13. He lived just long enough. I got just enough of him, just, just barely enough. If, I, mm-hmm. if he had died when I was 12 or 11 or 10, which I'll explain in a second, it probably wouldn't have been enough. And so he always said the cream rises to the top, the cream rises to the top, the cream rises. So I only work with the people, the cream that rises to the top are the mm-hmm. ones that'll do what it takes, the ones that'll get shot down nine times in combat or get into two near, two near fatal yeah. car accidents and just get it done. Because at the highest level, there are no excuses. No, I have no tolerance for excuses. You just make the investment. And that's in my, that's just in me. You don't make excuses. And my mom would never make, you just get it done and figure it out. And so my youngest brother was 10. Uh, I'm the oldest of three boys. And then I have an older half sister. She's six years old. So um, my youngest brother was 10. When my dad died, he didn't get enough. So he tried to jump into the, the, the grave when the cask mm. was going down and died of a drug overdose when he was, he never recovered. So he died when he was 29. He'd be 40. He'd be 40 now. Yeah, he'd be 40 now, right, while that actually happened, right? So so he didn't get enough, and he never recovered from that, but I got just enough, just barely enough. So that was another hit to the family, right? Another hit to you, too, as your brother. Well, I mean, again, so, like, people, I've seen so many entrepreneurs let, or people in general, you know, let work get in the way of family. I've been, I'm not... I will never be that person because I know what it's like not to have a dad around. And so I'll never be the person that I just, and then I know what it's like to lose a brother. So I'm just not, I, you know, I talk to a lot of um, very wealthy people, a lot, a lot of very wealthy people. If you deter, if, if you think of wealth as money, which is fine. And uh, many times, not always, but many times I'll ask, so how's your family or you know, that and many times, not always, but many times they'll be like, Oh, I never, spent time with my family or I never had a family and, and then you just you hear that hurt you, hear, you see the hurt and I'm just never going to be that person ever and um, talk about values I you know how many values I have I actually have very few values but the ones I have I just do them <laughs> and I just family first and I only work with a certain type of person the cream that rises to the top or will do what it takes and then it just eliminates all this other noise and it just eliminates it all and then just focus on the the people that get it and uh, the ones that are changing the world because I work with them and because they're the they're the ones that are actually doing something they're the wow that, that actually happens they're the ones that employ everybody else or create the right. technology that they just uh, that's what I mean no excuses only investment Very do you think that makes you the like a the, uh, you know I know you started Brepic I think it was 2017 is that right yes. do you think that that's what um, makes you successful in what you do is you know that you hold those standards those values so high you know because uh, you can dive into your work all day if you wanted to right I mean it's there um, right. so uh, having those standards and values I think uh, you know maybe holds you to a to a higher place right do you do you feel that way well I do and I'll extrapolate on that and so Again, my mindset just attracts the right people who understand it. And the only one who has to understand me, are, they're, you're one of two types of people, period. Because I only work with people that have visionary abundance investment mindset, visionary abundance investment. So people with those three attributes, because I simplify and see patterns, you can only be one of two types of people. One, you're running a high six-figure to ten-figure business. You see your family whenever you want to, and you do what you like to do when you're good at. Or you're going to be one of those people, you're not there revenue or profit-wise, but you will be. So you don't make an excuse. You just mm. make the investment. And so I have multiple billionaires that have been clients and five or six people that are dirt broke that have been clients because they just make the investment. You find a way to make, you take a second credit card out, you take a loan out, you just make the investment. Mm -hmm. And um, again, directness just attracts greatness and repels nonsense. That's all it does. And so the people that are attracted to this, to answer your question, they're those people with the three attributes and it repels everybody else and I don't care. Because those people are just going to waste my time. They're going to be the people that take away time from my family. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. It's so, so well, <laughs> it's, so yeah. people are like, how did you do this? How did you build a global company with zero business background? I'm like, well, directness weeds out nonsense and attracts greatness. And I have the right mindset that attracts the right network. It creates the right opportunities, period. 
Yeah, that's really good, Justin. Do you think that's something? Well, obviously, right? You, you said your mom was like this. Your your, da- your dad was like, like this. this. My mom. Yeah, like- <laughs> yeah, and your your grandpa. Like everybody's like that. Do you think that's something you're born with? Like something that's innate in you, or do you think that there are entrepreneurs that are dirt broke, like you were saying? And are trying to build that mindset. Like, do you have like strategic ways that you say, okay, do this, this, and this to build your mindset? Yeah. So you're either born the highest performing entrepreneur on the planet or you're not. Most people could not start mm. a business in a couple of years and you, they just can't. Why can't they do this? Because if they could, they'd be doing this. <laughs> you just, if, if everybody could do this, they'd be doing this. No, That's no, true. No. And most people make you well, <laughs> people are That's like, true. oh, you're doing so well. I go, well, you didn't see me with zero clients and zero revenue at three in the morning. Right. Most people can't do this. Okay. They right. just can't. <laughs> so I think that's a reality that, again, if most people could do this, they would be doing this. They can't do this. Okay. So that said, what I do, hmm. what I must stress is, and this does answer your question as well, is that I just work on my mindset every day. My mindset was not always like this. I was born to do this, but my mindset wasn't always like this. Right. So I just work on my mindset every day. Um, like a muscle. I treat my brain like a muscle. And I just build my mindset every day by either, again, making those big investments to be in the right room or listening to motivational podcasts or reading the best books. Okay. Or I have five to ten conversations at the very highest level with the top performing entrepreneurs on the planet every Monday through Friday. So my mindset is impenetrable and it continues to get better and better and better and better. And the beauty of it is, is there's no limit to that mindset. None. Because when you find the right people, it's a big, small world. And the people at the highest level, they just want to introduce you to more people like that because yeah. there's no competition. None. It's all collaboration. No competition, only collaboration That's so good. at the highest level. Thanks. That's so good. <laughs> That's it's really, really not good. hard, except most people can't do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, you're right. Um, and I, I love the way, that's why I love the way you think, because you're just like, listen, we're going to either get this done or we're not. I'm not going to waste no, no, my no. time you're with either the do in this or no, no, Right. No, no, no. There is no in between. So that's interesting. What you just said there is very profound, because I love my wife more than anyone on the planet and my children as well, but she's 100% gray. At the highest level, there is no 100% gray. It's all, I'm 100% black and white. So you either make Mm. the investment or you make an excuse. And if you make an excuse, I will not work with you because that's a waste of my time. Time vampire. I have no time to waste time. I have no time for nonsense. I have no time for time vampires. And the people that I work with, they they just get that. And again, those people only hang out with other people like that because why would you waste your time if you're at that level with someone who's going to waste your time? You just don't do that. So people got to make a mind shift if they are the people that are wanting to do this and are still we're living in that great place. You either have to do it or not, basically, right? Yes. Like it just it is really going to come down to the mindset, isn't it? Because you said before you you can work with wealthy people or broke people, but if the mindset is there, you can you can make it happen. Yeah, I mean, again, right mindset makes the investment, wrong mindset makes excuses. And I'm so good. Again, so there's no there is no gray at this level. There is no gray. There is only collaboration, there is only investment, there is only abundance, there's only visionary. There's no what do you cost or charge? There's no nickel and diming. There's no competition. You know, so I guess technically I'm in the PR space, right? Even though I was a journalist for 20 years, and created my entire business model based on how PR firms annoyed me for 20 years. So I saw a problem, created a solution, problem solved a successful global company. That's the formula to building a successful global company. You see a problem, create a solution, problem solve a successful global company. And so I was doing an interview the other day, and they're like, oh, you're, you're in a really competitive space, vertical. I go, no, I'm not. There's no competition. I, there's no, I, it's only collaboration. Because if someone doesn't match my mindset, I will not work with them. And the only people that are attracted to what I'm talking about are the highest performing people are the ones that'll do what it takes. So there's no, I'm the buyer. I don't sell anything. I'm just, I, I buy the people I want to hang out with. They happen to pay my firm but right. I'm buying there. That's, there's no selling anything. That's so good. Right. Because that can also like people who don't understand that would automatically think, Oh, you know, maybe Justin's arrogant or he thinks he's better or whatever <laughs> have you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, that's exactly. So people who think yeah. that are arrogant themselves because they think they're great at everything. I'm actually exactly. terrible at almost everything. I'm just really confident in one or two things. Right. And I just but, because that, you know oh, what geez. you're doing and you're doing it well. And, um, right. and you know, it, it's funny because I, I tend to be a little bit of a black and white person myself. So I get a lot of pushback for that. You know, uh, it's funny. Cause it's funny. I know that's, how, that's 
how I feel. But I, I love that because I can imagine, I wish I was a fly on the wall because I can imagine some of the conversations at your dinner table with your wife being gray mm. and you being black and white. Right. That has to be really great, especially for the kids, right? Because now they can see all angles mm. and they start to develop their own minds. How yes. fun are they, right? At eight and it's six. It's oh, best. it's so fun. I'm I remember so my boys being small. Well, you know, the, it's really cool because your boys aren't small anymore and, um, and you know, they're evolving in age and then brain. And uh, it's, it's, you know, my wife has made me somewhat of a human, like just barely human, like barely, because if I hadn't met her, this in, in, my, in my book, um, I'll just read this to you because, you know, people have these like, these long um, what, acknowledgements, right? They have these like, paragraphs and all this crap. And I'm, here's my acknowledgement. <laughs> To my, I didn't even thank my kids. To my wife, who has given me a wonderful life in every way imaginable. That's my entire acknowledgement. Because without her, I, I'm not a human. And so she said the nicest thing to me the other day. The nicest thing. Because uh, we, were, we were talking. And I was asking my 8-year-old Jake. I'm like, hey, what's, uh, the six, what's the coolest thing about the 6-year-old? And then he chases the 6-year-old. And then I asked the 6-year-old, what's the nicest thing about Jake? And then... Um, I told my wife the nicest thing about her. She puts everyone else before her, which is really admirable. And then she, uh, I asked her, and she takes a little while longer to think of things. Um, and she told me the nicest thing was I made her enjoy her life more because she makes oh, takes more wow. chances now. Because, yeah, wow, right. That's wow. a wow moment. Big, That's a wow. That was a big wow moment because <laughs> it takes her a long time to process things, which is fine. But um She's seen the success that my company has had and the big investments that I've made, and now she realizes that it's okay to make those big investments, and now she's a, she's a pediatrician, right? So she was working full-time. Now she only has to work part-time, so she sees our kids more. And um, and, she, and my risk-taking has allowed her to enjoy her life more, and that meant a great deal to me because, yeah. um, I, I mean, I can't even tell you, even though I'm trying to tell you how much it meant to me, but it's very hard to express that because... Without her, I'm in a ditch somewhere. I mean, you know, it wouldn't be good. And uh, for me to give her a better life is just the yeah. It's and and then and um, so like I I named our kids. You know, it was very important for me to to name the kids. And then but she does ninety nine percent of the parenting um, because she's a human. She knows how to do that, and I can barely <laughs> take care of myself. I love that. And um, <laughs> it's just so. I'm just so thankful for her because. I mean, it's just, she's made me a person. Like, she's given me some empathy. And, you know, it's just, she's given me a life, basically. That's what she's given me a life. Oh, that's so fantastic. Yeah. Um, Justin, you know, I want to thank you because, yeah, you say you're barely human, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy that, but, um, uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know what? Um, I wanted to personally thank you. I wanted to um, get you on the show, of course, and talk to you because you have a brilliant mind. But I wanted to thank you because you've been shifting the way I think. And, um, you know, I know we never met and we probably ne would have never met had it not been for like LinkedIn and social media and whatever. But you have introduced me to a lot of different ways of thinking and um it's making me grow it's helping me to grow i know i'm in my late 40s i've and and it's taken me this long but i'm here and i i never invested in myself i always invested in everyone else i just mm. always nickel and dimed for myself and i've decided in the last like you know year or so to stop doing that and it's helped me tremendously um you've also introduced me to like Dan Sullivan. And, um, and I'm actually, I was about to start taking the Colby test before we got on. So I'm going to make sure I go ahead and, yeah, and send, me your that. Score. send me your score. I will. Um, they have a, a couple of different, uh, like segments, right? Like a financial a one index. and like a, no, a no, just I'll do the, the a, a index. index. Okay. No, I'll index. do that right after we're done here. Um, but I want to thank you. Seriously. I want to seriously thank you, uh, from one human to another half human <laughs> <laughs> for taking the time to be on my show. This means the world to me. And, um, also for just spreading the knowledge that you spread. I know, I don't know everything, you know, I know I'm not up there with you and I definitely don't have a multi-million dollar business, but I, I do either. have the mindset that will help me grow. And I know that if I keep pouring into like listening to you and listening to minds like you, Justin, I see the second part of my life ending well. So thank you for that. You're welcome.
Thank you. you have a very great evening. I don't want to take too much more of your time. Go spend time with your beautiful wife and children. And I will let you know when this comes out. But thank you from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, thanks. And send me your Colby score. Um, I will. And Dan Sullivan, he's the co-founder of Strategic Coach, which, again, is top entrepreneurial group in the world. And basically 100% of the way I live my life is what I've learned in that program over the last oh, okay. few years. So I'll check out that program, too. Yeah, that's I'd invest 50k a year just in strategic coach. That's 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 an easy investment because that that strategic coach is for one out of every 400 entrepreneurs, not one out of 400 people. There, most people aren't entrepreneurs like we discussed, so it it weeds out most entrepreneurs, which is good because mm -hmm. I weed out. That's that's how I am. Yeah, right. Uh, it's it just in one of my uh, best friends. His name is Nick Peterson. He's he's I mean he's floating around and. Uh, one of his favorite phrases is the process is the shortcut. So all my brain is, is the shortcut to weeding out nonsense and all strategic coaches is these endless processes that help you shortcut everything and help you grow your mind and your business. So I can't recommend strategic coach enough. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. And guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. Again, this was Justin Breen. So make sure you guys check him out. I'll make sure to link all of his information below. This is Nina Perez. This is Straight Talk, no sugar added. Until next time. You have just listened to another great episode on Straight Talk, no sugar added. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get more amazing content. Also visit our website and YouTube channel. Until next time with more great episodes coming your way.